to do a short interview with one of us. This will only take about 15 to 20 minutes. It's not a really long commitment, but we will be asking all of you to do so. So if you can, can you please, if you're a member of our congregation, can you please see one of us on this team of interviewers? And the team consists of me, Jerry, our council president, Tom, who's on our council, or now transitioning off our council, um, Sylvia, or Sylvia, okay, there's Sylvia, and Kristen Scott. Many of you know Kristen, she's not here today. So please see one of us for a brief interview that would really help us out. Lastly, I would like to congratulate all of the graduates. You want to just stay where you are? She doesn't want to come in. <laughs> she told me she doesn't want to come in here. Uh, I would like to congratulate several graduates that are graduating this year. Um, first of all, Dane Alexander Ortiz, who is Sylvia and Terry's grandson, graduating from high school June 9th? 8th. June 8th. June 8th. Wonderful. Also, Abram Dean Schwach, which I'm sure is related to Ben and Mary, who are not here, but their grandson, who is graduating from 12th grade, and Sophia, who uh, I know and love over there. She's also, or she has graduated a couple days ago, also from high school. So let us join together in prayer for our graduates. Gracious God, thank you for calling us from places and into new places. Thank you for this com these commencements, which are not just endings, but also new beginnings. We ask you to be with the graduates, surround them with love and peace and guidance and comfort. Help them to know that we are always their church family, there for them in prayer and in support. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements today? Okay. Well, we've made the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment and share Christ's peace with one another. Good for you.
Pentecost when people spoke in a multitude of languages, all filled with the Holy Spirit, we get to hear a multitude of languages today, and we are blessed to hear that. We worship together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and the leviathan that you formed to spirit in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who teaches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Here ends the week. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Pembacaan kisah para rasul bahasa Indonesia. Ketika tiba hari Pentakosta, semua orang percaya berkumpul di suatu tempat. Tiba-tiba turunlah dari langit suatu bunyi seperti tiupan angin keras yang memenuhi seluruh rumah di mana mereka berdiri. Dan tampak kepada mereka lidah-lidah seperti nyala api yang bertebaran dan hingga pada mereka masing-masing. Maka penuhilah mereka dengan roh kudus. Lalu mereka mulai berkata-kata dalam bahasa-bahasa lain. Seperti yang diberikan oleh roh kudus kepada mereka untuk mengatakannya. Waktu itu di Yerusalem, diam orang-orang Yahudi dan yang salah dari segala bangsa di bawah kolong lalu. Ketika turun bunyi itu, berkerumunlah orang banyak. Mereka bingung karena mereka masing-masing mendengar rasul-rasul itu berkata-kata dalam bahasa mereka sendiri. Mereka semua tercengang-cengang dan berheran. Lalu berkata, bukankah mereka semua yang berkata-kata itu orang Galilea? Bagaimana mungkin kita masing-masing mendengar mereka berkata-kata dalam bahasa kita sendiri? Yaitu bahasa yang kita pakai di negeri asal kita. Kita orang partia media, Kalian penduduk Mesra, Batania, Yudea, dan Kapandokia, Pontus, dan Asia. Frigia dan Pamphylia, Mesir, dan daerah-daerah Libya yang berdekatan dengan Irene, pendatang-pendatang dari Roma. Ayat yang terakhir. Baik orang Yahudi maupun penganut agama Yahudi, orang Kreta dan orang Arab itu. Kita mendengar mereka berkata-kata dalam bahasa kita sendiri. Tentang perbuatan-perbuatan besar yang dilakukan Allah. Ya libat, hamis ini tu ya hamit ini tu. Kita bertoi dengan tu istan, kita itu berterkoi tu. Muda toi nang teh tak nang nara tu pak. Hai sifat ya sanapat. Negeri Bali kami, muda Peter senap sesuatu hanya kansa hanya ikut saja pastelit, kansa anak hasan ni yoga hansan way, yuta lain ya ikhmi sehat aswan hans Yerusalem sa, kau jelah hanya minum, minum lah hansan way kini kini tak hanya warm yoga. Nampak ni sehat ni bad kumalah ini, kau tak nak ayat lah, ni kalau insta sen amala, untuk perfect tak jual, kerjau insta, kerjau itu asal ni dah terpatu, tarlan ini, jom mana sahaja, wiener paypal sahaja, antan segala ni, ya alus. We at least have a lot of information. Poi kana hat ya titaren hat propetoidasa. Van ham ya van ham ya hat unit 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 siasa. Nuarin yosyo hanatasa. 
Sihan ay kan ang tansyal ni ay kan si Sultan. Palbal, palbal ya hand ni head and mindset. Ya prophet ay dasa. Na yat ni met taybala na ya mabal hala very tuli ya pagsuwa sa pa. Aurin gusto to the female. Kusa to the veteran punana. We punana. Yatuo laista. Have a pipe and gamala tula. Cook and gamala kiss him at Apula. Nepal is too bad. To grow the Lord. Thanks, thank you, God. Please rise for the gospel. Thank you, and thank you for bringing us the word in Indonesian and Finnish. What a pleasure. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you and he will be in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. The Israelites had lived under the lash of the Pharaoh until they were almost completely broken. And out of that place of desperation, God called Moses the prophet to lead the Israelites through a process of liberation and into freedom, into the promised land. This started with the meal of the Passover, where the Israelites gathered together and reminded each other of the God that they knew, a God not of, of, of slavery and injustice, a God not of the lash and the whip, a God not of imprisonment and pain, but a God of freedom, a God of justice, a God of truth, a God of power. And after that Passover meal, the Israelites set out from the land of Pharaoh into the land of freedom, liberation, life, and love. Exactly 50 days after that Passover meal, Moses ascended the mountain and met with the God of liberation, love, and life, who gave Moses the Ten Commandments the law, the word that we call Torah, literally in Hebrew means will, the will of God for the people. Handing over the law to Moses for all the people, God was saying it's not just about me anymore. It's not just about me leading the people into liberation and freedom, but now it's also about you. Here is the law. You, co-creators of humanity, you, co-creators of love and justice, you, my people, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do with my will? That was what we know as the first 50 days, the first Pentecost. Many years later, the world was captive to sin and death, and Jesus went willingly to the cross to lay down his life for us all because his people were worth even that, that great love, the absolute sacrifice of not only a person being led to die, but the creator, the God of all humanity, showing what love really looks like, the extent to which love would go for the people. Not only because of love in the moment, but love for all people and all generations to come. This is what love looks like. This is life. This is liberation liberation from sin and death, not just any longer liberation of a tribe of Israelites from Egypt, but now a liberation from all systems of corruption, all systems of oppression, all systems of prejudice, all systems of fear, all systems of slavery. Jesus went to the cross and beyond to show us what love looks like, what liberation looks like. But instead of keeping it just to himself and his work on the cross and through the empty tomb, 50 days after Easter, exactly 50 days, just like when those Israelites were given the law, the will of God, now 
the disciples met together in that upper room. Some scholars believe they actually met in the temple itself. We're not quite sure, but regardless, they met together, a traumatized bunch, people who loved Jesus but also were excited about the, rebel, the resurrection and not knowing if they were going to be next to be martyred. Not even two months after they witnessed this crucifixion and then witnessed the resurrected Christ, they met together and were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. Instead of the work just being in the realm of Jesus now, the work of the cross, the work of the empty tomb, the Spirit was given to the people. Just like the law had once been given through Moses to the Israelites, now the Spirit of life and love and liberation were given to all of them and all of us, the disciples to come. When we look at the Trinity, it's a very difficult thing to explain who this God is, three in one. But in very simplistic terms, we can think of God as the creator, the one who is the source of all life, the source of all love, the source of all wisdom, and the creator is the one to which we will then return. God the Father, the Mother, the creator, the source, the culmination of us all. And then we look at the second person of the Trinity, Jesus. Jesus is the materiality of God shown up in material form, in human flesh, but also in the things of this world, in the bread and the wine, in the water and the word. Jesus the Christ is the materiality of God right here with us all. The tangible, the things we can touch. We hear in Matthew 25 when Jesus said, you wanna know where to find me? Find me in the prisoner, in the poor, in the hungry, in the naked, in the outcast, in the material things of this world, we can find God, who doesn't just live up on a cloud somewhere, but lives here. That's Jesus the Christ in real physical form. We remember that every Sunday when we take his physical blood and body into our very own veins. And then the Holy Spirit, the third member of the Trinity, in some ways the most confusing. We don't quite understand, and we shouldn't. We shouldn't be able to capture the spirit in an equation, in a test tube, in an easy formula, and say, now I can manage the spirit, now I can manage God, now I've captured the entirety of God. And so we use ways to explain the spirit, and one of the ways that I find meaningful is to think of the spirit like God the verb, rather than God the noun. God is moving, breathing, among us, always changing. We see God in images of red as the spirit, signifying the spirit, and, and the image of fire, and the image of the dove, and the image in Acts today of a great rushing wind. God the verb. Some people think of the Holy Spirit as the glue that holds us all together, that keeps us all connected with one another. The Spirit connects us with God. The Spirit connects us to our neighbor. The Spirit connects us to our deepest self. And we know that when we sin, sin is profound disconnection. It's disconnection from our neighbor. It's disconnection from God. It's disconnection from who we were meant to be. Whenever we sin and act outside of the will of God, we were at that moment disconnected. And the Spirit calls us once again to connect, to unify with God, our true selves, and our neighbors. The Spirit is not only what builds up, the Spirit is also what tears down those things that need to be torn down. The institutions, the beliefs, the ideas. God is the great pruning hook that takes away, that burns up what we don't need anymore in order for a greater truth to form, greater life to grow, in order for new life to once again be given to the people. Sometimes when we talk about the spirit, we use very anemic ways of talking about the spirit. Like I've done children's sermons before where I've held up a pinwheel. You all know what a pinwheel is. We had them when we were kids and we blow on the pinwheel and, and we say, you know, you can't see the spirit, kind of like you can't see wind. And yet you can see the pinwheel move and we can see what the wind does and so we too can see what the spirit 
Spirit accomplishes. But really, wind, that's a pale reflection of the God of power we're talking about. My husband and I, the other day, we saw the new Top Gun movie. Have you seen it? Top Gun 2? You need to see it. Like, after church, go see it. <laughs> it's the kind of movie that you need to see on a big screen. And I don't say that about a lot of movies, but this is not a Netflix movie. This is a big screen movie with sounds so crazy it rattles the building. I had to remind myself as these Top Gun jet fighters were zooming through the skies, I had to remind myself that my feet were planted safely on the floor because it feels like you're up there flying with them. Those of you who have seen the movie, am I right? It is intense. These fighter jets go all over the place. The courage of the people to fly these things is amazing. These jets can go straight up, straight down, and fly upside down. And you just hope that you will live at the end of all of this. When you look at what's happening, though, you don't see the air. You see the pilot, and you see the plane. That's all you can see. And isn't that like us? To rely on what we can see. But if that plane was somehow flying in a big tunnel, a, a vacuum, where all the air was sucked out, that plane wouldn't be able to fly. It would just be a piece of machinery sitting on the ground, a lovely piece of furniture. It can zoom forward because of its engine. But my understanding, non-physicist that I am, so I don't quite get a grasp on this, and I was reading all kinds of how to fly and how planes actually work until I finally gave up because that understanding is above my pay grade, so to speak. But my understanding is that the engine makes the plane go forward, but that the air is created in such a way to give the plane lift. And the spirit is more like that kind of air with that kind of power than the kind of air you blow on a pinwheel and that kind of power. When we look around at our church, we rely on the things we can see. That's what people do. We look around at the red pyramids, the things that remind us of the spirit. We see the wonderful screens we have. We also hear some things. We hear the music. We hear the prayers. We hear the sermon. But we rely on what our five senses can tell us. We don't see the real power here. But let's make no mistake, if the spirit leaves the building, we wouldn't fly. We would get nowhere. It's not about our committees, our meetings, our power, our force, signing people up for things, and all of the wonderful work we do. It is wonderful. It's like the people that created the jet. It's fantastic. It just doesn't have any real power until you have the spirit's involvement and we need to realize that what's going on here is invisible, but the most real thing happening in the church is that we have been given the power of the Spirit. And like one of those fighter jets, we can do amazing things with the Spirit, and we are expected to. Those people that left Egypt were traumatized and wounded and broken and confused and wandering through the desert, they could have said, I will only deal with what's right in front of me, but I will not listen to God's law, God's will, God's wisdom. But instead, thank God they did listen to God's will, God's law, God's wisdom. Those early disciples were a traumatized, persecuted, terrified group. They could have said, we are going to be huddled in this upper room forever. And maybe the Spirit's okay for my personal needs to keep me safe. My personal sense of consolation and comfort. And of course the Spirit does that. The Spirit is our comforter. Whatever you personally need, the Spirit will give it to you. You need comfort, you got it. You need joy, it's there. You need peace, turn to the Spirit. It's available. You've got whatever you personally need. But the Spirit asks us to do so much more. This traumatized, broken, terrified group of disciples were enough because they had the fire, the wind, the power 
of the Holy Spirit. They would never have been enough on their own. And look at the movement they created. Look at how we're standing here today, still speaking about the Spirit because of that kind of power with that ragtag, upset, persecuted group of people. That's the power of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given to all of us. The Spirit did not start on that Pentecost day an institution. We are not here to protect and preserve the institution. The institution is here to protect and preserve the power of the gospel. That's what's important. The Spirit did not start an institution. The Spirit started a movement that day. Through people like you and me that are sometimes complacent and apathetic, sometimes persecuted and hurting, going through all manner of things that human beings go through, like the Israelites under Pharaoh's lash, like those people devastated that Jesus was murdered. We are the people of the world that go through everything any humans go through, and yet we're given the power of the Spirit, not just for ourselves, but especially for our neighbor. The cry of justice is God's cry for all of God's children, and we are called to take that Spirit and act with it. The Spirit is not to be managed. The Spirit is not to be contained. The Spirit is to be trusted. And we are given this today, once again, as a gift. A gift of fire and power and wind and speed and energy with the call to go forth and do something for the sake of love and life and liberation of others. Thanks be to God. We stand as we sing.
the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one God. Lord, 
Bless all the saints. Bind us with them through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we may all join in praising your eternal glory. Hear us, O God. Grant that, gathered and directed by your Spirit, we may confess Christ as, as Lord and combine our diverse gifts with a singular passion to continue his mission in his work until we join in your eternal praise. Amen. At this time, we will now receive our offering, but we have a special treat. I'd like to invite the Indonesian congregation that's going to be singing to come forward at this time and let us all receive this beautiful gift. Thank you for being here with us. The second is uh, our dialect, one dialect in Indonesia, and the third in English. So, and the title in English is called Happy Day. Especially. <laughs> Thank you. 
equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise and glorify you. You we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos. You encircled the globe with air. You created fire for warmth and light. You nourished the lands with water. You molded us each in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas. You blessed the Israelites and ch cherished them as your own, that also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit. You called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for the, all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Dia memberikan makanan dan mengatakan inilah tubuhku. Ambillah makanlah dan ingatlah bahwa darah tubuh Tuhan kita Yesus Kristus telah dipecah-pecahkan sebagai pemain sempurna bagi kita. Dan ketika kalian yang sama sudah makan, dia mengambil kawan dan dia mengucap syukur atasnya dan dia mengatakan bahwa inilah darahku. Ambillah minumlah dan berbuatlah ini setiap kali kamu mengingat akan aku. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when, with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food, nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and our petitions as Jesus received the cries of the needy and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer and bound to you in love. We feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb. Through whom all glory and honor is yours, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. In the language that is most familiar and comfortable to you, I encourage and invite you all to praise our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
forever and ever. Amen. You are all welcome to the feast. I invite you at this point to be seated, and you will be dismissed one aisle at a time. Please come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm.
Amen. Let us pray. Living, giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life in this day and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.